Aging is not a sin. Mother Teresa is more beautiful. So welcome to the Monday message. Um, today um, is a pleasant evening. A bit cloudy in fact. And we have chosen this evening to record this message to talk about the evenings of a human life. which is the old age. Now, you may have noticed the title of this message, which is, The Old is Gold. Yes, this evening we are going to address the issue of old age and the challenges of old age and a Christian's response to these challenges. In a sense, we will be talking about how to understand our old age, <clears throat> how to appreciate it, and how to overcome the challenges that age brings into our lives. Now this message is not just for those who are old. Let the title not deceive you. Definitely it has a concern for the old, but it is also for everyone who wishes to be part of a family. It's also for the young who will be the future old citizens. So listen with an open heart and mind. In the first place, I will talk about the old age as Bible perceives it. The old age brings in a lot of challenges to a lot of people. Some of them are frustrated with old age. Some of them deny that they are getting old. And some of them cover it up. And a lot of people are unhappy about getting old. And in the young also there is an attitude of intolerance towards the old. So this will be the context from which we will address this topic. In the first place, I want to speak to all those who consider that they are old. Now I don't want to give you the false promise that you are young. No, you are old. But, I want to tell you what God looks at your old age. Once you know how God looks at your old age, you will be able to look at your own life with the eyes of God. And I think that will give us a clear vision of the times that you are living in. In the first place, Bible gives a lot of respect to the old. And I always am fascinated by this text in the Old Testament, where in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32, I'll start with reading that in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32. You shall rise before the aged and differ to the old, and you shall fear your God, I am the Lord. So Bible says, rise up before the aged. Get up before them as a sign of your respect. And that is connected to the fear of the Lord. It says, you shall fear the Lord your God, I am your God. 
So if you fear me, God says to his people, you should also respect those who are advanced in age. Rise up before them. Now rising up was a sign of showing respect. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 31. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 31. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. So Bible says gray hair is a crown of glory. That means there is some glory in living up to an aged life, an old life. So Bible appreciates that. And in Proverbs chapter 20 verse 29. That's another beautiful passage appreciating the old age. The glory of youth is their strength but the beauty of the aged is their gray hair so bible says the young men their joy and their pride is their physical strength what about the old the gray hair that is the beauty of the aged praise the lord the beauty of the aged is their gray hair so gray hair bible considers that as a beauty not in the young but in the old it is a beauty now coming to the new testament so up to now we were looking at the old testament concept of the uh, of the aged and bible very clearly especially in that leviticus 19:32 says that's very clear god's will you shall respect not just your parents but even others who are old older than you in 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 1, that is St. Paul speaking to Timothy. Timothy was the pastor of the church and St. Paul the apostle had some important advice to Timothy how to rule his people. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 1, do not speak harshly to an older man. Look at that. Holy Spirit forbids Timothy or anyone in his position to speak harsh words to an older man. But, but then Bible says, but speak to him as to a father. So speak to him as a father. If he is older than you, old enough to be a father, give that respect of a father. What a precious piece of advice you will find there. Now, so it's very clear both in the Old Testament and the New Testament that God respects the old and he approves the old age and the old age is precious before the eyes of God. Now, having this understanding, we talk about challenges the old age can bring in. We know a lot of challenges. First of all, physical. When you get old, your strength diminishes, your ability to and mobility, they both decrease, your senses fail, eyes, ears, speech, they all diminish considerably, memory fades, then every other part of your body experiences some kind of decay, weaknesses. Now, so that is one of the challenges of the old age. Now, along with physical weaknesses, there are also mental and emotional weaknesses. For example, fear. Many are afraid. What, what, is, some of, what is one of the most common fears of old age? I think some fear about death. A few will be afraid of being lonely. And we can't blame them because many having lived a lonely life in their old age, they feel insecure, they feel afraid. Even to go to a shower, what if I fall in the shower and no one sees that? So what if I don't get up from the sleep? So what if I fall and then no one takes note of that? So these thoughts and concerns are actually realistic, 
it happens to um, a lot of all people so fear insecurity loneliness these are all part of um, the old age and we will not blame the old for manifesting any of these symptoms in their lives now having spoken about it i'm talking about some attitudes to help overcome our old age in the first place i would say accept your old age there's no point in denying that you're getting old when i say accept the old age i'm not asking you to undermine your strength if you are able to walk walk don't wait for someone to carry you if you are able to eat eat but at the same time as years go by we need to accept that we are aging now is there any problem in accepting that we are aging no aging is not a sin a lot of people today think that to become old is a sin so they try to cover it they try to prevent it and they try to pretend that they are not old but young still young it is not a sin to grow old it is not a sin bible accepts it acknowledges that and it's part of god's plan just because god has given us a span of life a psalm says a human life is maximum 70 or 80 could be a little more or less that's it so we need to accept that aging is in itself no evil so don't try to hide that aging process and today a lot of people they try to do that they can't accept that any age is old age now somebody is baffled at what age do you become old i was visiting a reasonably old lady in the hospital recently and this doctor came to her room while i was there and this patient uh, asked doctor was asking her a lot of questions and doctor introduced herself as dealing with geriatrics and the lady asked what is that then i looked at the face of the doctor and he was and she was struggling to answer her she was trying to avoid giving a direct answer to this patient you know what was the problem if she ever said geriatrics was that branch of medicine that looks after the aged this patient will get offended so she looked left and right and finally the patient insisted to, and she wanted to know what geriatrics was all about and the doctor had to finally say it is about dealing with the old i could see the hesitation on this doctor's face so that's the crisis people are facing today you can't call someone old you can't tell someone you're old you can um you know there's a lot of problems nobody people gets offended about it so this cover up is not good psychologically it is damaging in any sense of the world this covering up of your age will not help you in any way so we have to have a mental acceptance of it you can't you know live in your past or oh, when i was young i was strong when i was young i was beautiful yes you were but what is wrong with getting old are you not still strong are you not still being beautiful the other day another old believer that i happened to talk to so she was watching a television interview of mother teresa so mother teresa was being interviewed by an young news reporter in the newsroom 
Now, after watching this documentary or this interview, this lady, this old lady spoke to me and said, Oh, when I was young, I was that charming and beautiful like that news reporter. So what are you talking? My reply to this woman was, I said, lady, look, I think Mother Teresa is more beautiful than this young news reporter. Beauty, goodness, charm, these things are not reserved for the young but goodness in you, virtue in you, is your real beauty. So people need to come to terms with that. So to those who are suffering from old age, my advice is, please accept your old age with all its symptoms. Well, you know what it all implies. We'll have a lot of peace once we accept it. Secondly, prayerfulness. Look, prayer is a faculty God has given to all his children. So, one effective way of living your old age fruitful is to to be prayerful. Even if all your faculties fail, I don't think your faculty for praying will ever stop. I don't know where, but someone told me about a very respectful old man who had dementia and said he forgets everything, but he keeps on saying the Hail Mary all the time. Even in that dementia stage, that's all prayed. So, prayer can be there. So, through prayer, you can become strong in your old age. When Bible speaks about Moses and Aaron, both of them started their ministry when they were 80 years old, around 80 years old. When Moses went to Pharaoh, to first speak about deliverance for the Israelites, he was 80 years old. Aaron was, was a bit older than him. Now, when the Bible says, Moses became a man of prayer, because he became a man of prayer, he also had a lot of physical strength attached to him. If you read Deuteronomy 34, 7, it says, Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyesight did not become dim, and his vigor had not abated, ceased. Elijah, a typical example of how prayer can strengthen an old person. In that incident of Elijah praying for rain, I think it's in um, 1 Kings chapter 18. When the rain started coming after seven years, Elijah asked the prophet, sorry, the king, Ahab, run, you run, or you will get wet in the rain. Ahab rode off. But what about Elijah? Ahab rode off in his chariot. Bible says Elijah, he girded his loins, he ran ahead of Ahab. So Ahab was outrun by Elijah who was much advanced in age. It is the Lord who strengthens you. So that prayerfulness is very important. Now we also need to know, as age advances, it is our body that is suffering weakness, but not the inner man inside you and me. There's an inner being there. That inner being is renewed day by day. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. 
it says, so we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. So even though our outer nature is being wasted, wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. Every day we are being renewed in our inner nature. So that conviction we need to know. So in an advanced stage, as age comes, dawns upon us, we shall pray more and more and spend time with God more and more. As a result, what happened to Elijah will happen to us. What happened to Moses will happen to us. And what happened to Aaron will be our experience too. Now I'm talking about togetherness. Togetherness, build up that togetherness. I'm talking about uh, people who are aged, who are still having their spouses alive. You need to cultivate that togetherness because you, God gave you a spouse not to be abandoned when he or she is 70 or 80 years old, but to the end, to journey together, to hold together. That's the purpose God gave you as spouse. So I've seen a lot of spouses getting alienated from one another as they grow old. Don't do that. Let your closeness increase. That togetherness increase. You remember the prayer of Tabit when he got married on the first day of his marriage he prayed to God with his wife. One intention he prayed that night was Oh Lord, grant that we may grow all together. So he said, I want to live with her to a mature old age. We want to grow together, journey together. So that should be the attitude of couples who are getting old. Look, with age, a lot of limitations can happen to us. But one thing you need to know, love has no limitation. Love can only increase. It cannot decrease. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, love never ceases. Whereas many other things, they come to an end, but love never ceases. So understand that love never ceases and grow in that love. And again, to overcome the challenges of the old age, trust in God's promises. Very especially in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, God said, the young will fall exhausted, the youth may faint, but those who trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And the Lord very importantly said in Isaiah 46 verse 3 and 4, very important, just look at the screen and read it. The Lord says, you are carried from the womb. I am your God. Even to your old age, I am he. Just because you turned gray, I will not abandon you. So I have born, I have carried, I will bear and I will save you. So to your old age, God gives that promise. I will save you. I will not abandon you in between. Now, so trusting in God's promises, offer all your sufferings to the Lord. Offer the sufferings of your old age and all those things that come along with it. Offer it to the Lord and it has a great power to change lives. Another piece of advice to the old will be, don't regret in your life. You may have lived 70 years, 80 years. Look, there are many things you have not got in life. There are many things that you have not conquered, you have not achieved. That doesn't disqualify you. Within this 70, 80 years, God doesn't want you to achieve everything. No. 
But think about those things that you have already achieved. Your glory lies there. Your happiness is there. Those things that you have actualized in the past, they never lose its meaning. Even after you have died. Remember? Those things that you have achieved and actualized in the past, those potentialities that you have actualized in the past, they never lose its meaning. Even if you die, your good examples, having children in this world, bringing them up, buying a home or not, property or whatever, whatever, just not just material things, but whatever, those things hold a meaning for all your life. So don't think about things that you couldn't get, couldn't buy, couldn't achieve. Think about the things that by God's grace you were able to achieve. So everyone will have something to look back and glorify God, thank Him and uh, be happy about it. So regret is out of the window. It shall not be entertained in your old age. I was talking about people trying to cover up their age. Do you know why? I'm talking about the young. Do you know why a lot of people today try to cover up their age? Because the culture today, the values today have changed. That the old feel insecure. They feel that they are not accepted if they are not young. They feel once they become old, they are not respected, not abandoned, not cared for. If that wasn't the case, if age was, was respected in our times, if age had a lot of value in our time, I don't think anyone will go for this kind of gimmicks. I don't think anyone will deny their age. But that is a matter for thought for the young. What is the value that we are conveying? That only the young, the healthy ones, only their lives are worth living and the aged are not? No way. So think about it. What value we give to age? My final words to not to the old, but those who are young now, but will become old one day. Look, always remember that golden rule Jesus gave us. What is that golden rule? Do to others what you want them to do to you. If you can keep that golden rule, you will be blessed and the old also will be blessed. What you give will be what is what will be returned to you. So what you give, what you show, the values, the attitudes, the manners, especially in, with regards to the old, the aged, that is what will come back to you. So whether you are a child, a grandchild, son or daughter, grandson or granddaughter, always do to your aged parents or grandparents what do you want them to do to you that's a golden rule now brothers and sisters I spoke these things with the hope that it will help some of you to understand that to get old to advance in age is not a sin it's not your fault. It is God's plan. So please accept it, appreciate it, thank God for that and increase in love, love for God and for one another in these times.